Hello and welcome to writing and illustrating children's picture books with me, Christian Fox. Now the most frequently asked question in Google search and from my students and in the in the YouTube comments and everywhere else, the, the most common question I, I receive about children's picture books is how much money can you make from being a children's book author, from being a children's book illustrator? How much do children's books make? Can you even make a living out of it? How do those, you've all probably read those headline grabbing figures from the likes of JK Rowling and Julia Donaldson who make either tens of millions or hundreds of millions, how do they make so much money and what's what's the truth? Does the truth lie somewhere in between? What's the truth? Can you actually give up your day job? Can you contemplate giving up the day job? Can you make a living out of just creating, writing or illustrating children's picture books. So that's what we're going to be exploring and looking at the truth in this video. So let's let's start with the, the traditional route. Let's start with mainstream publishing and what you'll typically be offered there and then we'll, we'll cover the other areas in a minute. So as a mainstream publisher, let's say you've submitted your, your manuscript if you're a writer or your, your book dummy if you're an illustrator to a publisher, they like it, they want to go ahead with it, they want to offer you a contract, you'll be offered a sum of money as an advance. Now the advance is called an advance because it's in advance of sales, it's in advance of those royalty payments you receive annually or six monthly on sales. So the advance that they offer you is is non-refundable. Now that's, that's important to bear in mind because if the publisher decides to not go ahead with the book or if they never sell a single copy of that book then your advance is non-refundable. That's for you to live on so you want to, to try and get as much as possible in advance. Now typically you'll be offered anything from a thousand pounds, a thousand dollars at the very sort of lowest end up to ten thousand dollars or pounds at, at the highest end as a, as a fledgling writer or illustrator. Most typically it might be anything between around three to five thousand. It doesn't matter about the dollars or pounds. They're, they're, they seem to be pretty much, I work for both the UK and the US market and, and the, the, the dollars pounds um, exchange seems to be more or less equivalent. So you'll typically be offered anything from three to five thousand dollars or pounds for your first book. Now a lot have been trying to get away with as little as a thousand. Two years ago one of my students was offered a zero advance. Now my agent at the time thought this was appalling and they thought this was a really sort of underhand trick. Since then I've heard of other cases of publishers trying to offer as little as a zero advance, just, just offer no advance at all. Now that's that's not necessarily because they're trying to cheat you out of money, that's, that's usually because it's a, a smaller publisher who just doesn't have the kind of cash reserves to put up to, to give you an advance. They're trying to save whatever they can, wherever they can. Now long term it, it doesn't matter whether you get zero up front because you're, the way it works is you get a sum of money once your book has earned back that sum of money you will, you, and goes into profit, you'll receive royalties. So in theory, long term, you'll receive exactly the same. But you need that advance to, to live on and, and the book might not sell well, it might not ever earn back its advance. So you really could do with getting as much as possible up front. Now, a book costs a lot, a children's picture book, costs a lot to print. They're usually hardback, they're usually very high quality printing, they're, they're, they have to be distributed all over the world, all kinds of costs that the publisher has to put up, so they are trying to save money. Try and, try and either negotiate yourself or try and have your agent negotiate for as much as possible up front as that up front advance. Now advances are great, and you need them to live on. I, I wouldn't really accept a zero advance, but you're obviously not going to get by on advances alone. You'd, you'd have to be selling the publisher two, three, four, five books a year. I once sold a publisher five books in a single year. That was, that was a real strain to do that much, to do that many books in a year and to sell all those books to a publisher. That would be a real problem. You're, you're typically going to manage two, possibly three, books a year if you're a writer, illustrators, it will it will take them longer. So you 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 can see that you're not going to get by on advances alone. Luckily, that's just the starting point. 
Now we talk about royalties. Remember when I, I said when you were offered a contract, you were offered an advance, and it's in advance of royalties. Typically, as a fledgling writer or illustrator, you'll be offered a 5% royalty. If, if you have more sales behind you, if you become more famous and the publisher knows they can make an income out of your books, if you're a J.K. Rowling or a Julia Donaldson or something like that, then you can negotiate a higher royalty and, and a higher advance up front. But you're a, you're a fledgling writer or illustrator. Let's say you are. You're only going to be offered around 5%. I wouldn't accept less than that. that that's, that's low enough. You might be able to, to negotiate 1% or 2% more, but typically it's it's around 5%. So what does that what does that mean? If your book was to sell it's it's 5% of the gross figure. So let's let's say your book goes on sale and it it makes uh it's it's either 10 pound or 10 dollars a copy or or that's that's the gross profit they're making from that book. If they sold 30,000 copies a year, then you would receive uh what's that? 300,000 dollars or pounds in sales, so you'd receive around Fifteen thousand pounds or dollars a year just from the sales of that book. Now your book might not sell as well as that. It might sell better than that, but that that's kind of a, a ballpark figure. So imagine you were getting fifteen thousand dollars or pounds a year from the sales of one book from the whole lifetime. These 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 figures last the whole lifetime that that book stays in print. So every year or every six months or quarterly or whatever it is that the, the publisher's policy is, you get a cheque through the post or these days paid directly into your bank account for royalties on the sale of that book. Now that's that's in addition to all the advances that you can generate per year. So we started at the baseline with the advances and then for each book. Now if you look behind you, me on the shelves, all those books are books I've done. I had an advance on all those, and there are there are shelves on this side of the studio. I've I've produced around 50 books, 36 of which I think we've 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 written and illustrated. So that's that's a lot of books. That's a lot of advances, but that's just the sort of baseline. Now you imagine there's five percent royalty on each of those books for the lifetime those books stay in print, and that we're getting a check for every single one of those books each year. Then you can see how that adds up. It's it's like compound interest. The more books you produce, the higher and higher your royalties get. But again, that's just the start. Now on top of on top of the initial advance and the royalties, you can also claim um, other grants such as PLR, which is public lending rights, and ALCS and DAX, which are other organizations which which handle the copyright of your book, the reproduction. If anybody uses a uh, part or all of your book in a in a play, if they reproduce it in a in a radio interview, if they uh, refer to it in on television or anywhere your book or part of your book is reproduced, they're supposed to pay a licensing fee, and it it it's not much, but it it all adds up to several hundred pounds, several hundred dollars. It can run into thousands per year. The amount is capped, but if you're getting that on every single book you do. You can imagine that those hundreds or low thousands of dollars per year really start to add up. And that, that's just additional income. Okay, so we've covered initial advances and that they were, they were fairly low. Um, we, we've covered royalties. And again, on, on mainstream publishing books at, at 5%, that, that's that's okay, but you'd have to, you've probably worked out for yourself, that you'd have to sell a lot of books. You'd have to be doing this for quite a while before you started generating the kind of annual income to sort of keep you going, to sort of make a living wage and before it starts to get profitable. But this, this, is, this is fairly modest stuff still. How, how does the likes of Dr. Seuss, Maurice Sendak, J.K. Rowling, all those... How do they become multi-millionaires? How, how is this possible? On they, they, they don't have that many books in print, and if they're, if they're only generating a 5% royalty, maybe they've commanded a little bit more, how do they become multi-millionaires? Well, now we get to the good bit, because if your book sells modestly well, then you hope there will be sequels, fine, they'll, they'll, but print books themselves only make this, this kind of 5% royalty for you. They, they don't make 
much money. The real money is in the merchandising. Now, if you if you think about it, publishers don't make films. They don't make animation. They don't make t-shirts. They don't make toys. They don't make bone china tea sets. They don't make all those sort of merchandising items. Publishers don't make them. So where do they come from? The publisher owns the license for your book. They sell that license to a third party firm who either makes toys or produces films or whatever it is. The amount of money they receive for that licensing agreement is usually, or traditionally in your contract, the way it, it should be done, is it's split 50-50 between the publisher and the creator of that book. It might be it might be an author illustrator, it might be a writer, it might be a, a writer and an illustrator, in which case it, it's it's split between them. But you're suddenly you've jumped from that five percent royalty up to a fifty percent royalty. And not only have you jumped up to a 50% royalty, which is obviously much better, but films and toys and all those kind of associated merchandising items generally sell a lot better than printed books. So you can suddenly see, hang on a minute, there's there's been how many live action Harry Potter films? There's a Harry Potter theme park world. There's a Julia Donaldson Gruffalo theme park world. There are no end of Gruffalo toys, t-shirts. Paddington has gone into two films. There's, there's all those kind of associated merchandising items with which you're splitting the, the amount you've been paid by that merchandising firm, by that film production company, 50-50 with the publisher. That's where those huge profits come from. Now we've talked about mainstream publishers. We've talked about the, the fairly meagre advances, we've talked about the low amount of royalties you're offered up front, and the fact that you either have to have a lot of books in print over a number of years and making a, a sort of this, this compound interest of a lot of books paying royalties every year, or you have to have at least one very successful book that starts to make this 50% this royalty through merchandising and that kind of thing. But what about self-publishing? Is it possible to make money out of self-publishing? Is it worth it? Can you make an income? Can you even make a living from self-publishing? Well, the, the best news here is this on an ebook, on a let's, let's take Amazon Kindle as the most popular um, platform that everybody's aware of. You're typically offered a 70% royalty. Now remember that's in comparison to the 5% you were offered at a mainstream publisher. 70% is astonishing. Now there are a few things to bear in mind when we talk about that 70%. One is the retail price of the book is only something like 2 dollars or 3 dollars that might be dollars or pounds. So the retail price of the book is much lower. But even, even so, even at, at half the price, you're still making more on every sale of that book. And potentially at a lower price, you might sell more books. So it, it might actually balance out. Um, there are other things to bear in mind, such as the fact that you'd, if, if you're a writer alone, you'd have to have paid for an illustrator to before you could upload your book. You're going to have to pay for it to be illustrated yourself. With a mainstream publisher, they provide an illustrator for you. There are no upfront costs at all for you at a mainstream publisher. Whereas if you're self-publishing your book, you have to pay for an illustrator and potentially you have to pay for editorial services. It's kind of worthwhile to have your book professionally edited before you self-publish. You might be confident enough in your abilities, maybe maybe you're, you're, you're very competent at editorial skills, but it's often worth getting a second opinion and paying for that second opinion. These are all upfront expenses you have to pay, but after that everything else is profit and it is a 70% royalty. So that, that's great. But are you ever really going to make money without having several books in print or, or having at least one very successful book? Well, if you've, if you've already seen, there's another video I've made that's entirely on self-publishing and if it's possible to be successful in self-publishing. There was, there was one particular book. It was um, it was by, uh, what's his name? Carl Johan Forsen Elrin. I can never quite get his name right. It's the, the rabbit who wants to fall asleep. Now this is, this is the most successful children's picture book that's, that's ever been printed on the, the sort of Amazon Kindle um, platform. 
it within its it was uploaded at first around 2014 i believe and between in it, in its first year its first 18 months it made about 300 sales that's not 3000 that's 300 sales it it didn't do brilliantly well so obviously he wasn't going to make a lot of money out of that now for some reason that that nobody's been able to explain to me the sales suddenly jumped within a month or so to 29000 copies for some reason it, it captured the public's imagination and then it completely snowballed. It was picked up by several newspapers and news networks all around the world that this book has suddenly topped the Amazon bestseller lists in the, in the US and the UK and that went into fantastic sales. Now, the important thing to note here is, is not how many sales it made on Amazon. That's, that's okay, but it's the fact that Penguin Random House monitor these things. All the all the mainstream publishers monitor monitor the sales of ebooks. Penguin Random House saw how well this book was doing and offered Carl Johan Forsen Elrin a mainstream publishing deal. So it can work retrospectively. They they might see. They they see that they don't have to pay any upfront fees for that, or they're very modest upfront fees. They don't have to necessarily have the book illustrated. They gussied it up a bit. They, they cleaned up the typography and the graphic design and things like that. But they knew in advance that they already had a bestseller on their hands. They offered him a seven, a reported seven figure advance. They produced two sequels within the next two years. It went into ebook sales. Carl Johan Forsen Elrin now has his own publishing company in his native Sweden, selling ebooks. He has adult books. He has other self-help books. He's done astonishingly well. He's a multi-multi-millionaire now. So that was that was all from ebook sales. Now now your book might not do as well as that, but if it does, if you have enough books online and one of them does well enough to capture the attention of a mainstream publisher. It is possible for it to work retrospectively. And from there, it can go into the, the merchandising and make the really big money that we were talking about. It happens very regularly with adult novels. I think Andy Weir's Martian and, and E.L. James's Fifty Shades of Grey were books that started in the, the e-book format and they were picked up and retrospectively printed by a mainstream publisher and obviously they went into films and everything else so it it works very well for adult novelists it's it's a bit shaky at the moment for for children's picture books that the format isn't quite so obvious it works better as a print on demand service for children's picture books rather than just ebook sales but it, it's proof that it, it really can work and before you're picked up by a mainstream publisher should that happen even so at 70 percent royalties, you don't have to sell anything like the same sort of volume of books as you do with a traditional publisher. Is it possible to make at least a modest living? Well, outside of the, the big name authors, how many of those writers just just go on to, to sort of um, make, make a modest living out of it as, as, and not have to have a supplementary job. Well, according to the, the Authors Guild survey in 2020, I think that's an American survey, but that's the most up-to-date one I could find, 21% of practicing writers were able to treat this as a full-time job. Now, they earn between twenty dollars and $30,000, so it wasn't huge. Some of them earned more than that, but that was the sort of average amount. So, 21%, that, that's a fairly high attrition rate. A lot a lot of the others had supplementary jobs as well, and about 5% went on to make huge amounts of money. Now, I make a full-time living out of this. I've never had, in 30, 37 years since I, I came out of university, I've never had another job. All I've done is is either illustrate for um, for packaging, for product design and things like that, and then I went into children's books within within two, three years after that. And I've I've never had a full time job. I've never worked for anybody. I've always been freelance. And I do perfectly well. Now 
the, the thing is with me that I started out illustrating other people's texts and and then then I went into once again enough confidence writing and illustrating the books and now I, I collaborate with my wife and we write and illustrate and design the books ourselves and submit them to a publisher. I have a lot of books in print so you can imagine there's a lot of advances there's, there's a certain amount of advances per year and on top of that there's all those royalties which are still coming in on books we did 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago possibly. Um, so they come in and on all, all of our books that adds up. I had animation by the BBC for the Piggy Wiggy books and we also sold some stories to, to Driver Dan Story Train which was a, an independent television thing. So some of it has gone into that that sort of higher level. There were also piggy wiggy range of toys and and things like that. It, it's never been in, made into huge movies or a whole animated series or things like that. But there were there were much bigger royalties on things like that. So I do okay. I have a, a four bedroom house in Surrey. I have two cars. I've had a string of classic cars. I collect nice watches and things like that. I do perfectly well. So yes, it's it's possible to make. A living without without those sort of stratospheric Julia Donaldson, J.K. Rowling, Dr. Seuss levels, it, it's possible to make a perfectly good living and not have to supplement your income any other way. But it it's not a get rich quick scheme. For anybody who picks up a children's book and thinks this this doesn't look very hard, and I've seen what these these big name authors make, this this looks like a really easy, quick way to make money. It's, it's not. It's quite hard to have your book accepted by a publisher. The market is very competitive and your book really has to stand out in the contemporary market. You have to be offering something new and different or a real sort of variation on, on what's already there. Otherwise, they don't need you. Um, so, yes, it's possible to make a perfectly good, perfectly comfortable living to treat this as your sole job without having to rise to those sort of multimillionaire levels. So let's just do a, a final summing up. My advice would be to really, I, I, most of the students I've talked to, most of the practicing authors and illustrators I've, I've talked to at, at book fairs, at literary events, at, at publishers events and all kinds of things like that, they are people who are passionate about writing and illustrating a children's book. They can't imagine doing anything else. They can't imagine having chosen any other profession. They do it because they love it and that's 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 the best way to approach it the, the the sensation you get when you see your first printed book on sale in a bookshop and then having having brought it home and reading it to a child for the first time is completely unmatched and that that almost makes it worth it alone if you can at least support yourself financially so so that that feeling you get alone goes an awful long way to making this a worthwhile profession. It's also very cool when people come up to you at parties and say, and what do you do for a living? And you're able to say, well, I create children's books. And they're, they're astonished that, that anybody can do that for a job and not have another career profession on the side. So I would, I would concentrate on those that do it really want to do it. Those that do it love it. And if you love it, you'll become very good at it. You'll, your, your writing will improve, your illustration will improve, you'll sell more books to publishers through that passion. Those books will subsequently do better and better. But I wouldn't necessarily go into this as a get-rich-quick scheme because it takes a while to sort of build up a, a catalogue of books you have in print and it, it takes a while before one of those really captures the public's imagination if it ever does. So it's not a get-rich-quick scheme but yes you can make a good living out of it. So if you've liked this video or it's been helpful, then do the usual like, subscribe, comment, all those things. There should be a web link on the screen to, if you want to go into more depth, I also provide a, a, a children's book writing course, creating your own, writing or illustrating your own children's book. So take a look at that. There are other free resources on the on the YouTube channel for you. So take a look at the free resources, take a look at the website, see if you want to go into more depth on any of the subjects we've talked about. And I'll see you in the next video.